new discovery may solve the mystery of the Great Pyramid. This on Beyond Science TV, the Great Pyramids of Egypt. They're still a mystery. And they're some of the most mysterious structures on Earth have been the topic of countless debates throughout history. And the question of how they were built, when they were built, and who they were built by, and for what purpose they have to this day have garnered endless theories and speculations. And here's what we think we know. Well, recently, someone has stated that they're not stones, first of all, that they're bricks. The composition of them was made by bricks. But let's see what else is coming up. Archaeologists believe that the Great Pyramids in Egypt were constructed by the Old Kingdom Society around 2500 BC. They believe that the main purpose of the pyramids was to act as tombs for the pharaohs and their queens, and that would make sense considering the sheer size of the pyramids. They're huge with the largest and greatest pyramid of Giza, incorporating around 2.3 million stone blocks with an average of weight of 2.5 to 15 tons each. And But besides what we can measure, the rest of what we think we know about the pyramids are mostly just theories. The fact is, we really don't know for sure why the pyramids were created, and we don't know who created them. We really don't know exactly how old they are, and we for sure have no clue how a Bronze Age society that we perceive to be primitive was able to create these things. Not only that, there are a few unbelievable facts about the dimensions of the Great Pyramid in relationship to the Earth. Did you know that if you take the height of the pyramid and multiply it by 43,200, you get the polar radius of the Earth? And not only that, if you take the base perimeter of the pyramid, multiply that by 43,200, you get the equatorial circumference of the Earth. Now, why 43,200? The number isn't random. It comes from a key motion of the Earth called the precession of the Earth's axis. Pyramids were built and encoded with the exact dimensions of the Earth at a scale of 1 to 43,200. Isn't that amazing? I mean, these people must have been uh, the top of the top of mathematicians and geologists and astronomers. Now, general agreement on how the pyramids were built? It seems that archaeologists generally agree that the granite from the pyramid's internal chambers was somehow quarried from 533 miles south of Giza in Aswan, and the limestones used as casings were from Tura, a few miles away. But because these stones were so massive, everyone had varied opinions about how they were transported here. Every once in a while, a new theory will come up and claim to solve the mind-boggling mystery of how the pyramids were constructed. The last big theory was proposed in 2014 by a Dutch engineer who claimed the, that the stones were transported using sand and water and a wooden sled. Can you imagine? They had a wooden sled, even though they were able to calculate the exact dimensions of the earth and put them in proportion to, the, to this pyramid. That's hard to believe. Anyway, then you find... According to the British documentary called Egypt's Great Pyramid, the new evidence, there is apparently new evidence that two-ton blocks of limestone and granite were transported by thousands of laborers along the Nile River. In wooden boats held together by ropes, special canals were also used to bring them to an inland port which was in close proximity to the base of the Great Pisa Pyramid of Giza. Now that's assuming that these blocks are stones because there's a a recent European uh, brick maker that claims that the stones were not stones, that the, brick, the blocks were not stones, but they were actually man-made uh, huge uh, bricks. And that goes along with what we know from uh, the Exodus, that there were brick makers making these blocks for the Great Pyramids. Now, the scroll that provided evidence of such a procedure was written in an Egyptian overseer named Mirror. Mirror wrote these uh, scrolls, and it's apparent the only first hand account of how the Great Pyramid was constructed. In the papyrus scroll found in the seaport of Wadi al Jar, it is written that Mirror and his team of 40 workmen were in charge of using wooden boats along the Nile to carry 
150,000 tons of limestone in order to build Pharaoh Khufu's tomb in 2600 BC. He explained that the boats were tied together by ropes, which helped to keep them secure. And besides the scroll, researchers also uncovered a system of canals and a ceremonial boat, which lends truth to what Mira wrote, detailing that his team of 40 skilled workers dug canals to channel the water from the river up to the pyramid. Now, what do you think? Is this correct? So did we just solve one of the greatest mysteries in the world? I think there are so many mysteries to these pyramids, we cannot solve them. Uh, there's even recently, something has been found in a, an underground chamber with a lake and a sarcophagus that they state is uh, to be opened only with a DNA key and the DNA supposedly belongs to some kind of a Nephilim. So we can't open that thing ever because we don't have the DNA of the Nephilim. What can you say? This is full of mysteries. I'll leave links below for you for this. This is Beyond Science TV article. This is new evidence that the great pyramids of Egypt might have been made of stone blocks that were cast and not quarried. This is on Humans Are Free. Quote, this is not my job, and quote, begins Michael Barsoom as he recounts his foray into the mysteries of the great pyramids of Egypt. As a well-respected researcher in the field of ceramics, Barsoom never expected his career to take him down the path of history and archaeology and political science with materials research mixed in. As a distinguished professor in the Department of Material Science and Engineering at Drexel University, his daily routine consists mainly of teaching students about ceramics or performing research on a new class of material, the so-called Max phases, that he and his colleagues discovered in the 1990s. And these modern ceramics are machinable, thermal shock resistant, and are better conductors of heat and electricity than many metals, making them potential candidates for use in nuclear power plants, the automotive industry, jet engines, and a range of other high demand systems. But uh, here we have pictures of the ground level block in front of the Great Pyramid of Khufu in the Giza pyramids. It includes an irregular lip at the bottom that would have been very hard and somewhat pointless to carve. This lip indicates that the block was cast in place. The material in the lip having slid out under the temporary wooden mold before hardening. Barsoom analyzed a piece of material from the bottom lip and says he did not find smoking gun evidence. Quote, the only logical conclusion is that after 5,000 years, the binding phase has basically been washed away. Solution? Get samples from the core of that block. Easier said than done, though. End quote. This is an image by Marco, Marco Barsoom via, the, uh, via Alex Wright. Now, the, then, then Barsoom received an unexpected phone call from Michael Carell, a friend of a retired colleague of Barsoom, who called to chat with the Egyptian-born Barsoom about how much he knew of the mysteries surrounding the building of the Great Pyramids of Giza and uh, the only remaining of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The accepted theory that the pyramids were crafted of carved out giant limestone blocks that workers carried up the ramps had not only been embraced by everyone, but as important, had quite a number of holes. Well, I remember that uh, it's written in the Bible that they were casting bricks. They were not carving blocks. But anyway, uh, I guess some people thought that they were made up of limestone, blo uh, limestone blocks. So if they are not limestone blocks, what were they cast from? Now, according to the caller, the mysteries had actually been solved by Joseph Davidovitz, a director of the Geopolymer Institute in Saint-Quentin, Saint France, 
more than 20 years ago. Davy Davids claims that the stones of the pyramids were actually made of a very early form of concrete created using a mixture of limestone, clay, lime, and water. Quote, it was at that point in the conversation that I burst out laughing. End quote. That's what Barsoom said. If the pyramids were indeed cast, he said, someone should have proven it beyond a doubt by now in this day and age with just a few hours of electron micro microscopy. And it turned out that nobody had completely proven that theory yet. Quote, what started as a two-hour project turned into a five-year odyssey that I undertook with one of my graduate students, Ardish Ganguly, and a colleague in France, Gilles Hoog, said Barsoom. A year and a half later, after extensive scanning with electron microscope observations and other testing, Barsoom and his research group finally began to draw some conclusions about how the pyramids were built. They found that the tiniest structures within the inner and outer casing stones were indeed consistent with the reconstituted limestone. The cement binding the limestone aggregates was either silicon oxide, the building block of quartz, or a calcium and magnesium rich silicate mineral. The stones also had a very high water content, unusual for the normally dry natural limestone found in the Giza Plateau. And the cementing phases in both the inner and outer casing stones were amorphous. In other words, their atoms were not arranged in a regular and periodic array. Sedimentary rocks such as limestone are seldom, if ever, amorphous. The sample chemistries the researchers found do not exist anywhere in nature. Quote, therefore, Basum said, it's very important that the outer and inner casing stones that we examined were chiseled from a natural limestone block, end quote. And it's also more, even more startling. Barsoom and another of his graduate students, Aaron Sakulic, recently discovered the presence of silicon oxide nanoscale spheres with diameters only a billionth of a meter across in one of the samples. This discovery further confirms that these blocks are not natural limestone. And generations misled. At the end of their most recent paper reporting these findings, the researchers reflect that it's ironic, sublime, and truly humbling that this 4,500-year-old limestone is so true to the original that it has misled generations of Egyptologists and geologists, and because the ancient Egyptians were the original, albeit unknowing, nanotechnologists." End quote. As if the scientific evidence isn't enough, Barsoom has pointed out a number of common sense reasons why the pyramids were not likely constructed entirely of the chiseled limestone blocks. Egyptologists are consistently confronted by unanswered questions. How is it possible that some of the blocks are so perfectly matched that not even a human hair can be inserted between them? Why, despite the existence of millions of tons of stone, carved presumably with copper chisels, has not one copper chisel ever been found in the Giza Plateau. Although Barsoom's research has not answered all these questions, his work provides insight into some of the key questions. For example, is it now more likely than not that the tops of the pyramids are cast, as it would have been increasingly difficult to drag the stones into the summit, up to the summit? Also, casting would explain why some of the stones fit so closely together? Still, as with the great mysteries, not every aspect of the pyramids can be explained. How the Egyptians hoisted 70-ton granite slabs halfway up the Great Pyramid remains as mysterious as ever. Why do the results of Barsoom's research matter most today? Two words. Earth cements. Quote, how energy intensive and or complicated can a 4,000 500-year-old technology really be? The answer to both questions is not very. Barsoom explains the basic raw materials used for this early form of concrete, limestone, lime, and diametaceous earth can be found virtually anywhere in the world, he adds. Quote, 
Replicating this method of construction would be cost-effective, long-lasting, and much more environmentally friendly than the current building material of choice. Portland cement that alone pumps roughly 6 billion tons of CO2 annually into the atmosphere when it's manufactured. End quote. Ironically, Barsoom said, this study of 4,500 years old rocks is not about the past, but about the future. End quote. This by Sheila Brinninger and Dori Lona Rose from Live Science, and it's on Humans Are Free. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.